I think it's pretty wonderful that this year's uh, reinvigorated many people about the Amiga, the 30th anniversary. This is my fifth show. <laughs> when I started out, I had black hair. <laughs> um, while the, uh, the Amiga 30th shows have been really good and it really uh, reinvigorated the community, to be honest, this show goes on every year, regardless of 30 years, 20 years, 15 years, and this will be here next year. So I think that, uh, I think Amy West you know, deserves a special credit. It didn't take the Amiga 30th for Amy West to run, it runs every year. So I'm pleased to be back here for the 30th anniversary of the Amiga, but also, well, how many years is this now? 19? 18 years. So 18 years this show has been running. So I'm here to talk about uh, Aeon technology and what we've been doing. And uh, if you remember last year, my, my type of my presentation was content, content, content. Well, hopefully this year you'll see what we've been doing. It's not all been successful, but it's been mainly successful. So uh, without any more, I'll start off. Now, of course, we are here on the 30th anniversary of the Amiga computer. If you were here last night, or if you watched the street, or you couldn't watch the streaming video of the Viva Amiga movie, uh, we got to see a very poignant, bittersweet story of the rise and fall of the Amiga. And uh, two or three times through the movie, we heard about how it was dead, how we're all crazy. Well, perhaps I am. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, but, and also, I think someone said in the movie, there'll be no Amiga 5000. Well, I'm here to tell you, there is an Amiga 5000. It's called the Amiga 1X 5000. And I always wanted an Amiga 5000, so I was very pleased when we put a vote out to the community and the community selected the, that, that name for the, the new computer. So anyway, 30th anniversary, Andy Warhol, Debbie Harry, we, heard, we all heard RJ's story about Andy Warhol clicking everything. Would the flood fill work? And it did. And that's kind of a, a, the life of the early Amiga. Now, obviously, in 2010 was my first AmiWare. And uh, that's when we announced the Amiga 1X1000. Now, it seems like a long time ago now. And I did have black hair then. <laughs> All right. A bit of dye might have helped, but generally it was black. <laughs> um, we know about this, don't we, Brian? <laughs> uh, so in, in uh, 2010, we announced the, uh, the Amiga 1X1000. Uh, it, the beta test started in September 2011. It took a long time to get there because of a number of issues. Uh, the first contact system shipped at the end of the year. I think one shipped at the end of the year, so I can say 2011. But they actually shipped in 2012. And I'm pleased to say, I'm sad to say as well, that we sold our last X1000 last week, two weeks ago. So, um, it's done really well, so I'm, I'm really pleased. Uh, I would like to solve more, but um, um, a number of issues pre prevented us from doing that, and mainly to do with the availability and cost of the PA Semi CPU. But anyone who's using X1000, and we're using this for the show today, and we used it last night to stream the HD video for, for Viva Amiga, knows that it's a really good, solid, reliable computer. Of course, we didn't stop with the X1000. I was stupid enough to start another project <laughs> called Cyrus, and this took a long time. And this was the early Cyrus. It was a small cut-down board which could run three different CPU types. And we, we the developers, had a number of issues. Uh, we made some errors, made some mistakes, and uh, it never really came to fruition because the cost of the board was such that we couldn't get it any cheaper than the X1000, or so we thought. And so uh, it, it didn't make sense to make a, a smaller board with less features at the same price. And I'm pleased to say that eventually <laughs> we, we created a replacement for the X1000 uh, based on the Freescale Core IQ, uh, PA, uh, PA Semi, oh, PA Semi, a brain, a P5020 uh, processor running at 2 gigahertz. Uh, this is the beta test one which shipped in 2014. Beta testers have had their systems for a long, long time. And a number of issues um, to do with software, software support, porting, uh, has slowed down the, the, re the release of this machine. But I'm pleased to say that we're getting very close for OS4 to a release. And of course, uh, the, we, we've got a pre-release version of final edition on the X1000. You know, we talk, 
people get hung up with names. <laughs> Final edition doesn't mean anything. What it means is it's a snapshot at that time of what is regarded as a stable Amiga operating system. And Steve and Solly can tell you more about that. But it's a snapshot, stable, there it is, final edition. If you're a beta tester on Amiga OS, Amiga OS 4, you'll know you're getting updates all the time. And uh, they come in daily. They come in too quickly sometimes. And when they, get a, when they go for a stable ISO, they try to get everything up to the same, a similar level. Uh, PowerPC, uh, operating, uh, Linux operating systems, already run on X1000, I mean, there's a number of them. Um, we will probably provide a, a, a live um, distro with the X5000 when we do eventually ship it. And of course, I'm pleased to say that uh, we want to support multiple operating systems, and uh, Morph OS is now uh, running quite nicely on the X, X5000. I spoke to the developers at the Germany show, and uh, they think it will be uh, shipped with their next uh, Morph OS release, which may be the next three to six months. But they're always very careful about uh, announcing releases. But the good, the good news is, like the SAM 460, you can have a next generation machine which can run uh, designed for Amiga OS 4, but can run uh, Morph OS. So I, I see that's great for the users, and, uh, and that's what I want to see more of. And if we get AROS running on this as well, I'll be really pleased. AROS, Morphos, Amiga OS, and Linux, more the merrier. <laughs> the board, this was taken about a month ago. I saw a picture. Matthew has a video cam on the web looking at his workshop. And he showed me the other night, and I saw the cupboard that they're in. The cupboard's now full. There must be 160 boards in there. So, yes, we would like to release it sooner rather than later. <laughs> and you've got to remember, we've paid for this all up front. Um, all the NRE, all the development costs, all the prototypes. Uh, obviously, the beta testers have got a special deal on their boards, and, and they uh, they paid for um, uh, a discounted price to get into the program. But all these boards that are stacking up are all on us, so we, we need to start selling these boards. So I'm pleased to re uh, report that once Matthew gets back home, he's in control. The uh, Mega One X1000 pre-order website will be up and live. Um, it's, it's the, he's got the skeleton there already, he just hasn't finished completing it. Uh, some little show called Amy West got in the way. We have a 5040 prototype. Uh, like the 5020, it's free scale. Uh, P5040 CPU, quad core. Uh, quad core, dual core makes a little difference these days because we don't have multi-core support yet. But hopefully, as Steve, Steven Soli of Amiga OS Team Lead, that was for Team Lead, can tell us more about that. Um, the, we, it's a 2.2 gigahertz, 64-bit quad-core. And I'd imagine sometime next year we'll uh, have some, some of these systems available. We're working on the firmware now, some firmware changes uh, for U-Boot. Last year, content, content, content. <laughs> Well, I hope I can say we've actually delivered. So, next one, please. Uh, we launched, if you remember, last year we talked about an, our new AMI store. It was launched in November after AMI West. I'm pleased to say that uh, Matthew issued build 661 last week, this week. Matthew is the developer of AMI store. It's a, it's a really big job. He's done a really good, I think he's done very well. And uh, 661. We don't have many software titles on yet, but 44 and growing. Um, we have 700 registered customers who are regularly ordered from Store. We've had about 2,200 orders, paid orders, to date, in 10, 10 and a half months. And it's proven very, very popular with developers. And uh, so much so that uh, Entwitter X are exclusively publishing all of their Amiga titles through Store, And they do this for a number of reasons, and I think they've said this on the web. We host and deliver the software. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, we look after version control and bug reporting, and you can bug report through Ami Store. Uh, we do the marketing and live sales reports for them. So anytime they can go into their port of Ami Store, see what they're selling, see what's happening, see bug reporting. Uh, we deal with not so problem in the US, but we deal with the complexity of the EU uh, sales tax, which is really complex. They changed it all at the beginning of this year. So we have to, we account for all that for the developer. They don't have to worry about that. 
uh, and we, we have a secu secure checkout with PayPal, and Matthew's just, or, just added, and you'll see it the next week or so, two more weeks probably, uh, uh, credit cards. So we've been asked for credit cards. A lot of Eastern Europe, they want to use credit cards. They don't want to use PayPal. So we'll have uh, credit card usage as well, again, under the secure system. Any questions about Ami Store, please speak to Matthew. How often do you have to Yeah, I would like Ami Store to be... I'll go on in my, my talk. You'll see why I want to open it up, okay? So what have we been doing? We've been wanting to create more software content for PowerPC, uh, next generation Amigas, and classic Amigas. So we've been working on acquiring our iconic classic title, and you've seen us pick, pick a number of those up. Uh, personal paint, image effects, Latin 4D, etc., etc. Uh, we're developing new software and titles and utilities. You've seen multi viewer. We have multi edit, tabbed editor, and we have a clip viewer. So you now have historical tab of clip viewing, multiple clip viewing, and they all interact uh, live. I'll see your picture in a minute. And we're, we're, we're sponsoring major software porting projects. Some are coming to fruition, some are quite slow. And we're supporting Amiga OS and compatible system developers, software developers. We set up a uh, dedicated SVN. We now have 14 developers engaged with NDAs, and it's growing. We have 23 paid projects ongoing uh, for adding new content. And uh, we have Mantis bug, bug tracker implemented so uh, developers can uh, report and, and we can track, check and track bugs. And it's just in the last three or four months is really starting to come together. <coughs> um, perhaps you can play the video. That'd be nice. Thank you. these things come around. Uh, if you uh, think back to the Amiga.org logo, uh, and people say, why do we buy Amiga.org? You bought it for the logo. <laughs> 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 and um, that was actually created in two, uh, 1999, 2000 for Amiga.org by Kevin Saunders, who does a lot of our graphics artwork. Kevin created that video. So it, it, it's funny how things go around and come around. Um, so the yeah, full screen. That's great. So the uh, we're taking a lot of these utilities we're building and these applications we're building, and we're putting it together in enhancer software pack. If you remember Commodore early days, they had an enhancer software pack for the for the version 1.3, I think, and they all ha had one for version two. So this is our, our our nod to the past. So our enhancer software pack will include multi viewer, clip viewer, multi edit, workbench candy. TuneNet and many more applications that you want to click on. Um, these are three programs running, not the same program. Multi-edit, multi-viewer, clip viewer. They have real-time data sharing between all three programs. So when you make a change in one, it updates the others. Uh, so it's, we're really excited about this. It actually gives us a, you know, a much more modern uh, applications to run on the, on the Amiga OS. Um, you can talk to Matthew, but uh, he'll tell you the, per the, uh, the plans for the classic version. And I presume it will include similar things in classic. Yes? Good. Uh, we acquired Optimed. You'll be pleased to know that Optimed now is now running natively on uh, OS4. Uh, this is the, the player. Uh, we acquired TuneNet. We've got an update to TuneNet, which will be coming out very, very soon. Uh, it gets rid of the, the, the fix, the cludge, uh, for a, a shoutcast. And it also adds a few little extra features. And this will be our first update to TuneNet. 
uh, Workbench Candy, um, that'll be on the, the Enhancer CD. We've just released a new uh, autumn uh, animated Workbench backdrop. If you see that, it's probably the most artistic one we've got to date. Very relaxing, it's autumn leaves fluttering, slowly falling. Yeah, really good, I think. Uh, Sys Inspector, if you remember Sys Inspector, we've now acquired the rights to Sys Inspector, and uh, that'll be on the, uh, the uh, Enhancer software pack, plus a number of others. But this is a call to all developers. I don't care whether you're Aeros, Morphos, Migros OS. I want developers like the Hollywood developer who doesn't mind developing for any platform, creates key software, and then ports it to the platform. Obviously, our main interest is OS 4. That's where we come from. But if we can do it for Morph OS, Aeros, it's great. Because it, it's good for the developer because he, hopefully he'll sell more copies. And we'd like to obviously put it in, in through Amity Store anyway to increase the content. And of course, we want support for multiple operating systems. Um, some of you may have seen a strange looking beast at the back. Uh, many years ago, about 2007, uh, when I first started dealing with Michael Bacalana, I said, look, we could have a, a classic laptop. You've got Amiga Forever, let's do a classic laptop. I hate running Amiga Forever on top of Windows. I hate the way when you open a classic program, it goes through the, uh, the windows, all the aspect ratios are wrong, it's just not good. So let's have a classic, ah, oh, no, it's difficult, can't do that really. And you remember the, um, what was it, KX Lite? He did? So I even came up with a silly name for it, and it was a laptop incorporating a classic experience. You put them all together, and what do you get? Alice. So back in 2007, I wanted an Alice laptop. It's taken eight years to get there. Uh, and with the help of a, with a Jan from Amikit and, uh, and a team which includes Ken Lester, who's here today, has been dem demoing Alice. Um, Pat Wall, who's uh, part of our core Linux development team for uh, Aeon. Um, Kevin Saunders, who does the graphic artworks. Tony Willens, is obviously uh, the WinUE guy. We've put a laptop together, which actually is pretty sexy. If you're into x86, right? If you're not into x86, it doesn't matter. But I have to use x86 for some Windows programs I can't use. I prefer to use Linux if I have to use a x86. But on this, you can use Windows, you can use Linux, you can use AmiKit, it looks native, you boot straight into it. Or you can use, if you have the, the, the ROMs, the PowerPC ROM, and the Picasso 4 ROM, you can actually buy a copy of um, Classic uh, OS 4, OS 4 Classic for uh, 4.1, or a classic Amigas, and that will run as well. And you can see them all being demoed uh, at the back. I love that picture. Yeah. <laughs> I said, look, I want something that's Dali-ish, Dali and is Alice in Wonderland, and doesn't infringe any copyright. So I think we did quite well. <laughs> um, so what we've got is an Amikit runtime environment, an Amiga Forever core, so we, we're, we, we're legal. We're using uh, licensed ROM images and, uh, and some Amiga, classic Amiga OS files. Uh, Ubuntu Linux installation, a standard Windows installation, an Amiga OS 4 classic option if you've got the other uh, ROMs and, uh, and you've got your uh, licensed version of Amiga OS 4 point, point 0.1 file edition classic. Now, in the uh, German show, um, <laughs> I just put a little... It's actually, I put uh, our next board, our next system. It's called the A1222, part of the Amiga 1200 series, Amiga 1 1200 series. And it's been at four or five shows, and no one's even noticed. I just left it there in box and just let people look at it. And never, no one's mentioned it, no one's said anything about it. So it's quite good. So at the German show, um, Christian Zagotsky, who's part of our core Linux development team, and we, the Linux developers have had the board for about six or seven months, a really uh, good Linux distribution on it. Uh, the OS4 developers had it for a similar time. Um, he just, we just left the system running uh, with a, doing a, a HD, playing an HD video concurrently with a 3D Gears demo, concurrently with a LibreOffice um, animated presentation. So all three running concurrently on this little device. And I didn't know at the time, but Christian left the side off. <laughs> So people are coming to take lovely pictures. 
And it also questioned about this nice book he created, which was how to install Linux on the A1222. It's kind of a giveaway. Uh, so the cat was out of the bag. <laughs> and uh, there's the boot screen for the A1222, the early boot screen. It's a uh, mini ITX board. It's the it's designation of the board's table. Table is part of the uh, Jules Verne link that viruses have. Table. Uh, Cyrus, Nemo, all part from, the, from that uh, link. The B-52 song title is Topaz, which is right on so many levels. I mean, the yeah, early Amiga font, great. Uh, it's a C Freescale P1022 DPU. I've seen lots of interesting things read on the, written on the forums about it. Uh, you, can, you have to make your own mind up. Yeah, I'm extremely pleased with that uh, CPU. And why did we choose it? Well, you've got to remember that when uh, Chip companies say, we've got this new lovely chip. It's never available. It's just a pre-announcement. Pre so when we started this project, there were no T-series chips out there. So, um, and these things take time to come to fruition. You may uh, actually see reference boards available for the T-series. Actually, they're not available. They don't have them. They have uh, the more expensive boards. Like with Cyrus, when we developed that, we bought a reference board from Freescale. It cost us uh, actually 3,000 pounds. What's that, $5,000? That's typically the sort of price you pay for reference boards. Not always the same, but typically it is. Price. What is the price of it? Well, no price has been mentioned, and the, the, the figures I saw on the forums are, are laughable, but uh, speculation is good. I always, I always think speculation is good, and I always think publicity is good, good or bad. So uh, I never correct it unless, you know, just to say that there's been no price set. However, it's our intention that we are building 1,000 of these in the first run. We're getting volume, and we're going for low price. So we're going for low price on this when it does finally come out. This is not your X5000 price, your X1000 price. This is a, almost a loss leader, because we believe content's what's going to drive this. We can sell more content. The growth of Amistore, sales through Amistore has convinced us there's a pent-up demand in the media community for quality software. So if we can have more hardware, more low-cost hardware, we'll get more uh, we'll get more sales of software, and that can help support the hardware. Okay? Um, it runs Debian Jesse. It runs it well. Um, it can run the special SPE version, or it can run the standard version. The standard version is a little slower, very usable still. The SPE version is a little faster. One has the... the, the, the uh, one is set up for the special floating point unit, and one isn't. And just to prove that it was at the shows, <laughs> whoever was at the Amiga 30th in the Computer History Museum, uh, you can, that's me at the back, uh, next to Michael Batlan and a few others, and there's my hand on a table. So, <laughs> so it, was, it, it, was sitting, it was sitting on the display with all the Amigas, so I didn't want it to lose out. I thought it was very unfair for it to lose out. And that included Pegasus's and Sam's and you name it. They were all there on that, on that display that day. So I'm pleased to say Tabor was already also there. But really, you know, I, I, I'm really pleased it's the 30th anniversary. I'm really pleased it's over. I'm totally tired. Uh, <laughs> um, but I think it's great that we can celebrate the Amiga 30th here at Ami West. But forget the Amiga 30th. We'll be here next year. When all the hullabaloo, hullabaloo's died down, Amigans, true Amigans, will still be here celebrating and enjoying our, our hobby. And whatever your colour your hobby is, red, blue, black, green, I don't care, just enjoy it as an Amigan. That's me today. <laughs> so I've got time for a few questions. Dave. The Morpheus Dev team have a couple of boards. I want you to take my money now. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk over no, no. LD, 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 can I remind you something? On the laptop. Because <laughs> like, you've already put your money in for the table board. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, well, well he, he was right. And if you, it, uh, we had the privilege of seeing the Viva Amiga movie, and you've, only if you've been to the the Germany show, the California show, and Ami West, would you've seen that movie. So I would say probably 1,200, 1,300 people have seen that movie. It, it's a very poignant, bittersweet story. And what, uh, last night when, you, when I was watching, I was thinking, if only. But there is that little uplift towards the end. And it's people like us. And uh, at the German show, um, Dave Haney said, you know, he's really surprised that 30 years on, something he was involved as a young man, it still has such an impact. And he was thanking the community. He's thanking us. And because uh, we've kept it going. It's us that's kept it going. Right? And I, I can't think of any, many other really, you know, group of people that have done this. I mean, there are lots of them, user groups. I mean, there's 64, there's Atari, and that. but there's something special about the Amiga group, I think. Whether, you know, whatever flavor you like, there's something really special about it. Good special, not special needs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, mm. oh, <laughs> too late. Too late, it's in manufacturing. Um, we, uh, we, we, what we did with both the Cyrus and the table boards is we pre-ordered all the long lead time items and paid for them. So we paid for 1,500 boards, five for Cyrus and 1,000 for the table. So we paid for all the long lead time stuff, that's the CPUs and some other components. So we've actually, we've actually paid for most of it. So when it's delivered, we have a, as Matthew will tell you, that's why his hair is going great, um, that we have obviously some balancing payments to make, but we've made an awful lot of commitment up front. So when you hear certain people on the forums you know, making uh, comments, just don't believe them. I mean, uh, uh, just, just proof of the puddings and you know, the eating. You know, we, we will deliver, we are delivering. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, the, yeah, the question was, when will the X5000 ship? Will it ship before the end of the year? The final decision for Amiga OS 4 is up to uh, Stephen and his team. Uh, we've tasked them with delivering a minimum viable product. Uh, we're very close. Um, we've made great strides in the last few months. And um, uh, hopefully Steve will give us an update during his talk. Uh, I, I would be very disappointed if we didn't ship before the end of the year. Uh, um, the boards are there. Uh, no, this is not a challenge to Stephen. When I say a minimum viable product, I mean a product that goes out there. You'll still need some drivers, but it'll get you up and running. Uh, and there'll be updates coming out, regular updates. And that's exactly what we did with the X1000. Despite what you might read on the forums, the X1000 is very well supported with drivers. We do need multi-core support, but that's, 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 that's endemic for all the systems. We need them. Um, but uh, the, the, you'll see drivers come. But uh, when you get a system, you'll have sound, you'll have Ethernet, you'll have video, <laughs> yeah, you'll have all those nice things. A lot of those lines. Uh, mm. Um, actually, I haven't really thought about that. Matthew's dealing with that. Um, the question is, what are the specs for the X5000 that's shipped? It's a system. So it's a tower case. We've got a new case. It's got the bone ball on the front. It's, a, it's a, again based on a fractal design. It will have the RAM. It may have an Ethernet card initially. Um, it, will, it will have a sound card initially. Yeah. Oh, we'll always have a sound card. We took the decision to have a sound card, that's right. Um, and it will have obviously a hard drive and CD-ROM drive. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, go on. Okay, cool. So we've got some changes left. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Uh, well, yeah, I will. Uh, it's all about the uh, the special FPU that's in the uh, P1022. Uh, yeah, we spoke with the Hyperion developers, the the kernel developers, and uh, asked them were there anything specific they need to worry about. No. So we will just uh, we'll handle that. We've done it before. The SAM460 has some missing commands. You know, we just handle it. We'll do the same with this. So when they said that, I thought, well, I, I wasn't concerned. Uh, I've seen on the forums recently that someone under the name of Hyperion MP, I don't know who that is. Um, no, actually I don't. Cause it, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it said that um, that it's not a problem. So uh, I'm not a software developer. Okay. Again, uh, I would ask Steve to cover that in his talk. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess besides Alice Robin, you got more experience. Is there is a need for laptop and portable hardware uh, anywhere in your work? No comment. The uh, question was: Is there a laptop? Or portable harbor in our roadmap. Uh, I'm going to say no comment. Okay. Actually, I'm very curious. About, the question is, when will Prisma Megamix ship? Prisma's been ready for a long, long time. The hardware. Uh, actually, it's, I've been accusing Matthew of feature creep because we've added lots of new features. It now records as well as plays. Um, and of course, if you feature creep, you never get things out. So uh, there's one final, he's a little smiling at the back there. But, uh, <laughs> Matthew, when's Prisma Megamix going to ship? <laughs> we, have, we have all the hardware, all the boards. How many? A couple hundred. OK. So it, it's ready. Um, the, uh, we've got, um, it's actually the SVN starting to prove real dividends because that obviously is, is on the, on the SVN and the developers who are working on it are actually uh, collaborating very well. So it, we've always seen the benefits of having an SVM and, a, and, a, and the, uh, you know, a, a developer list. And I have to thank Steve Solly for that because he recommended it. <laughs> well, there is a there are some Uh, we will do a, probably a launch next when it's ready. We'll do a launch. So I think we're trying to think where we'll do that at the moment. Um, you know, in Europe or or somewhere else. You know, a special launch party. Okay. Any other questions? On the floor. Okay. Thanks very much, guys. <laughs>